In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent, and the Gospel is the raising of Lazarus from the dead, this beautiful foreshadowing of the resurrection of Christ, the very center of our faith. As we enter into these mysteries that remind us of the power of Jesus' resurrection, that lead us into the very life that we seek, we ask for the pardon of our sins. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, that we may walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of, of redemption. redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With, with the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus raises various people from the dead, including uh, the daughter of Jairus, the son of the widow of Nain, and here uh, Lazarus, one of his best friends. All of those raisings are foreshadowings in the scriptures of the ultimate resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus' resurrection is not simply the resuscitation of his body. It's not just a return to his former life. It's a whole transformation, both of his risen reality, but also the promise for us of eternal life. So for us as Christians, Jesus rising from the dead is the very cornerstone of our faith. And it's what we're moving towards as we prepare to celebrate Easter. This triumph over sin and death, this conquering of everything in us that's broken, sinful, and dead and transformed in the grace of Christ. So Jesus calls Lazarus out of his tomb and says, come out. So we could think of the ways that we feel confined with uh, this pandemic um, afflicting us. I'm sure many of us feel confined in our homes. Our regular freedom of movement, our, our regular activities are restricted or taken away from us. People that are ill in the hospital or nursing homes, people that um, live a life where they can't get out of their home. Many of you who watch uh, this Mass are in that situation. We think of our, our sin or our fear, or our anxiety, all those tombs that perhaps constrict us, that, that bind us, that keep us from being free. Jesus, in all of his risen glory, stands before us and simply bids us to come out. Doesn't mean that our situation may suddenly be transformed or changed as we would like it to be. But it does mean that the Lord promises to be with us even in those moments of, of limitation, those experiences of suffering, 
those moments of fear and darkness. The Lord wept at the death of Lazarus. He loves, laughs, and cries with us in the mystery of our own human life and leads us to the glory of the resurrection. That's our trust and that's our hope. Together we profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. With faith and hope in the resurrection of Christ, we voice our petitions and the needs of the world. And in this time of Lenten journey, may Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all who are entrusted with the faith lives of others instill in their faithful what it means to call Jesus the resurrection and the life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That government prayer. leaders will seek the wisdom, strength, and truth of the Lord as they carry out their governing actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we and those preparing for the Easter sacraments will grow in an understanding and acceptance of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That united and fortified by the Holy Spirit, we may overcome the many challenges related to illnesses, especially the COVID-19 virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For persons with disabilities, the forgotten, the sick, and those who have been called from this life, and those who mourn their death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That perpetual light now shines upon all who have entered eternal life, especially Elmer and Rita Camus, who we remember in today's Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And in a moment of silent reflection, let us now offer to our loving and forgiving Lord the prayers of our own hearts. And for these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we lift our needs, our petitions to you. We trust in the power of your son's resurrection to transform us, heal us, bless us, and save us. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, 
He leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be, to, Thanks God. be to God. We thank you for sharing in worship with us this morning. On this fifth Sunday of Lent, the celebrant of this Mass was Bishop Donald Hying, the fifth Bishop of Madison. Monsignor Larry Bakke, the Director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and Pastor of St. Clair Vesey Parish in Monroe, was our concelebrant this morning. Our brothers and sisters in faith who are deaf and hard of hearing were able to experience this time of sharing in faith, prayer, word, and Eucharist thanks to the interpretation of Mary Fruits of St. Dennis Parish in Madison. And our closed captioning is provided by the Apostolate. We are able to bring you this program of hope and inspiration to you through the generosity of the owner, the staff, and the management of WICTV, who share with the Apostolate a sincere concern for the spiritual lives of persons of all faiths who are living with disabilities of all natures. And I am Mark Kaisley of St. Maria Gretti Parish in Madison, and as always, it was an honor and a privilege to share with you in this most special ministry of the Apostolate. Make this final week before the sharing in the Passion and the Easter Resurrection of the Lord a beautiful week in which the Spirit of God dwells in you. Needless to say, this global pandemic is unprecedented in our history, especially in terms of its impact on our daily lives. The consequences of our essential shutdown as a nation are far-reaching and disturbing. We are all praying for the victims worldwide, those who have died, those who are ill and suffering, the effects of this coronavirus. We pray for healthcare workers, first responders, and government leaders who must feel overwhelmed. I pray for our elderly and vulnerable populations, including the poor and homeless here in our diocese. I pray for those who have lost income already and are economically struggling. We think of families who have their children home all the time. All of this equates to tremendous stress, anxiety, suffering, and fear. 
In the face of all of this, God is inviting us to a deeper radical trust in Him. In some ways, with our normal routines disrupted and many of our securities stripped away, we are faced with a profound existential moment. Do I truly believe in God and confide my life to His mercy or not? Our whole life of faith and practice of our religion has prepared us for moments such as this. Now is the time for us to truly let our faith in the Lord shine forth for others to see and to draw strength from our witness. This Lent is one we never bargained for. The mortifying sacrifices and charitable deeds we resolve to undertake on Ash Wednesday may pale in comparison to the challenges and crosses that have been imposed upon us in this moment. As Christians, I encourage all of us to allow this moment of difficulty and challenge to be spiritually fruitful for us. Knowing that death and suffering always lead to new life. We are moving from the ashes of a grave illness, loss of employment, and a collapsing stock market to an ultimately deeper and rich relationship of faith and trust in the Lord. Here are some suggested ways to grow in faith, hope, and charity in these challenging days. Watch Mass daily online, uniting your prayer to the Holy Sacrifice. Make a spiritual communion at communion time, inviting the Lord into your heart. Number two, pray the rosary with your family every day. The power of this holy prayer to the Mother of God is remarkable and unfailing. And trust your worries to her maternal protection. Number three, read the Bible daily. Take time to explore the Word of God. Scripture is both words of comfort and challenge for us. The Bible contains everything that God wants to say to us. Four, do spiritual reading. Explore the Liturgy of the Hours or Lexio Divina or the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Abundant resources online can help you find new ways to pray or discover new spiritual insights. Number five, visit your parish church to pray before the Eucharist or go to confession if it remains possible to do so and if it seems prudent to do so. Practice the acts of charity towards your family and friends. Number six, being together so much can certainly make tensions rise. An ounce of patience, forbearance, and charity in a moment of trial and stress is worth more than a pound of it when everything is smooth and easy. And number seven, witness to your faith in Jesus as the source of your hope and peace in these challenging times. This time is an opportune moment to show others the source of your hope and calm. As the scriptures say, the earth can rock, the mountains can fall into the sea, the pestilence can prowl in the darkness, but we will not be moved. Our faith is in Christ. As the saying goes, I do not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future.